<laughs> we are super excited, everybody, to finally welcome today's guest. He is a ray of sunshine in the music world, known for his upbeat synth-induced tracks and feel-good rhythms. He just released his new album, Harmony House, last month. And now, chat. he's coming to us from Austin, Texas, for a live performance. So give it up, everybody in the chat, for Dayglo. Hi. Hey, everyone. Hey. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> How's it going? Good. good. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, I've gotten to log on the past like 10 minutes or so, and um, I'm honored first to make the festival lineup. That's exciting. Oh, yeah. Really um, excited to have you there. Uh, let it Send us like a rider whenever you can. Yeah, so we let have us know. <laughs> let us know what you need, what your milk preference is, and yeah, we'll just go from there. Definitely that. Yeah, that's uh, that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're super happy to have you on stream and we're really looking forward to your live performance as well. But first, we just want to chat with you a bit. Love the setup, by the way. And yeah, I'm really you. looking forward to seeing you like take over the whole thing. But, you know, I would love to know just what has the last year been like for you and coming into 2021, having your project release. What's that all been like? Oh, it's been crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, just the fact that I'm like doing streams like with Rolling Stone is just like nuts. Like I would have never thought in a thousand years that like this would be happening. So um, it's really amazing that um, all of this is, is going on. So I feel super honored. Yeah, we're really excited to just to have you here too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but before we get into uh, like a hefty interview portion. We wanted to ask you too, because we were just having this discussion and we, we've been seeing it in the chat a bit. Uh, do you have a favorite cereal by any chance? Uh, Reese's Puffs oh. never disappoints, um, but Cinnamon Toast Crunch until the shrimp thing. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, um, so, that came up yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I heard y'all saying that. And um, yeah, Reese's Puffs is usually my go-to, but cool. my mom makes uh, some really good like homemade granola. Ooh. So usually I would just eat that if I'm eating like cereal. That's actually really that nice. Delicious. Also granola oh, yeah. and yogurt. Well, <laughs> um, anyways, uh, kind of talking about your last year and talking about, you know, you releasing this new album very <clears> recently. <throat> um, we wanted to talk to you about when you really started getting into music and kind of what your first experience was that you can remember with music? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up kind of in a musical home, not like necessarily. My parents were both like country singers um, and they like met at this country cover show thing um, backstage. And so I guess like music is in my blood, you know, as people say, but they weren't necessarily like encouraging me to do music. Kind of the opposite, to be honest, because they knew a lot of friends um, that had tried to, you know, make it in the craziness of the music industry. Um, and then it never really worked out. And so they kind of met it with like a lot of caution, which I mean, granted, if like I had a teenage son and he was like, I want to be a rock star, I'd, you know, probably always be a little hesitant there. Um, but yeah, I, I started making music when I was like 10. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just like used garage band and stuff and, cool. Um, figured out how to work around the loops and then I started making my own loops essentially um, and teaching myself the bare minimum of each instrument and then just like making music from there. Cool. And did you start yeah. out really on guitar mostly? Yeah. So I got guitar lessons and then quit like immediately because it was nothing like Guitar Hero um, <laughs> and it just wasn't, it hurt, like, you know, and I just, button? I didn't like it. <laughs> And then um, I just wasn't learning the songs I wanted to play. And so yeah. um, I ended up just teaching myself on YouTube. Nice. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So when was the moment for you when you are making music yourself? When was the moment that you were like, okay, I want to really put out a project? Because I know in 2016 you put out a project um, called Kindred. But what was that like oh, for wow. you when you were finally like making that jump to actually showing the world what it was that you were making? <sighs> Yeah, that's a good question. Like, I just, I like, I'm still learning what I'm even doing. Like, because I, I live in Austin and I grew up in a small town in Texas. And I like assumed ev like everybody made and mixed their own music and was completely and utterly involved with every single step. Um, and I just viewed music as this very like personal thing. Um, like that one person would do. I never really saw it as like a band coming together and then you like get a producer and like all this stuff. Um, I just kind of like thought people made music alone 
And so because of that, I just got obsessed with making music and just kind of putting it out. But I never really looked at it or thought of myself as like an artist. Like I'm still figuring out to say that it's like my career, I guess, but um, it just feels so weird to say that like, you know, I'm an artist. And so to put out my first album, it wasn't like a thing like Harmony House that I just put out was much different than my first. And that's a new experience. I mean, granted, still, they're very strange times to just do everything digitally. Um, but yeah, I just like was in my college dorm. I went to UT Austin um, and I clicked upload um, on my album completely independent. Nobody else had really even heard it. Um, and then, yeah, the Internet did its thing. Wow. Yeah, that's really cool. And how has that transitioned for you or how do you feel like you've evolved when you think back to that early project versus the project that you just released? What differences do you see in yourself as an artist? That's a great question. I mean, I think as a person and as an artist, I've grown up quite a bit. I mean, so Fuzzy Brain I made when I was 17, 18, and now I'm 21. So I'm not like a wise elder, but, um, I've grown up a lot and obviously situationally I've grown up a lot just kind of with everything going on with Dayglow and, um, yeah, it's just been really exciting, but the process is the exact same as fuzzy brain. Um, I wrote and produced and played everything myself and mixed it as well. Um, I had someone else master it, um, which was really nice for fuzzy brain. I just used like an AI, like I clicked and dragged it on this website that like mastered it. Um, I'm sure that just made it louder. Um, but yeah, I had someone master, but everything else I just made on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess my influences changed and naturally that kind of changed the way the music sounded. I've been listening to a lot of like eighties pop, um, like yacht rock kind of stuff. Um, and where fuzzy brain, it was more like, uh, 2010 indie focus, like two door cinema club, passion pit kind of stuff. Yeah. You can really tell that eighties influence. I feel like, especially on harmony house, I think it's really nicely baked in. Um, but even talking about all your work as day glow and even pivoting back to kindred a bit, um, what made you pivot from kindred to day glow as a project? Yeah. It, to, to be honest, like, I don't even know if I was thinking about it. Cause I was just like, making music in high school but yeah. if i had to pinpoint like a reason kindred was more like electronic focused like believe it or not like i love porter robinson and he was like um my biggest influence at that time and just like the idea of like playing everything on stage alone um was the focus of kindred and that just got kind of lonely and the there weren't any limitations and that was kind of hard to make music um, because when it, music is fully electronic, um, and not like analog or something, um, there's no limits and I couldn't finish songs. And so a day glow, my idea was to make music alone, but performed by a five piece band or that it could be played by a five piece band. Um, and just that limitation alone helped me crank out a lot more music. Cool. That's interesting. So then musically, yeah. what was kind of your approach to structuring songs, if that's what you were going for? Yeah, I mean, for Kindred and Dayglow, like I get pretty overwhelmed with layers and like a lot of intricate details and stuff. Um, but for Dayglow, for the most part, I really try to limit myself to the amount of tracks that I can record and thinking about what each bandmate will be like able to do with two hands. Um, and just like limiting that really helped me. Um, Cause with Kindred, it was just like all synth, all electronic drums. Um, and when you do that, things can just get crazy. What was your real um, main goal in starting to pare things down and starting to give yourself more ability for a band? Yeah. Like, I mean, I was a sophomore, junior in high school, so I wasn't like playing shows. I never thought like I would be playing shows, but I knew I wanted to move to Austin mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to like have a band to play like backyard shows and stuff. Um, and I knew that that was going to happen. And so Dayglow was just my opportunity kind of like making music alone and then playing it with other people but music is just totally therapeutic to me like and it's always been like the way that i don't know i guess middle schoolers like 
play Call of Duty or something. Like I just played, I made music. Like that's my thing that I do to like ease my mind. Um, so I just naturally do it all the time. That sounds so nice and calming. And, yeah. you know, in moving on to Fuzzy Brain, what, in terms of songwriting, um, when did you start writing that album? And what's kind of your approach when it comes to songwriting? Um, let's see. Fuzzy Brain, I think I started 2017, around 2017, and then finished like 2019. Um, and it was just kind of like a collection of songs. Like I wasn't thinking, uh, logistically like the music industry, like I just wasn't (laughs) thinking about making an album or like promoting it or marketing or anything. Um, which is ironic because I was a advertising student at UT. Um, but I just was kind of like, it's my music. I'll just put it out. Um, so fuzzy brain was kind of just like a collection of songs that, um, I made, but the way I, I look at albums and I think a really cool thing about my music is that it's gotten attention so young. And so each album is kind of like a timepiece of who I was at the time. So for fuzzy brain, it's just kind of like who I was at the end of high school and now harmony house is kind of like who I was when I was 2021. 20, um, and technically and logically speaking here, um, if I keep mixing and making my own music, then my next album will be better than the last um, because I'll be learning how to make music, um, which is kind of fun. But yeah, for Fuzzy Brain, I just kind of like, I don't know, just my songs I made in high school. And uh, when you think of Fuzzy Brain as a timepiece, what are really the themes that you associate with that album? And does that carry out through the rest of your discography, you think? Hmm. Yeah, I'm... I like, I know, I never want to write like general love songs or something. Like, mm-hmm. I, I mostly write about time and change. I think because it's therapeutic for me and I think it can be really applicable to a listener because um, everybody's going through change. I mean, every day that's what time does is just it changes. And so um, if you really channel something, about that. It, it helps me write. Um, but I think for fuzzy brain, it was generally about like feeling anxious about the future and like waiting for change to happen. If that makes sense. Like when you're in high school and like, you like want to move to the city and like be on your own and like that kind of thing. Um, whereas harmony house is kind of like dealing with really sudden change and like all the attention that I get which I never thought I would have. Um, And just like, yeah, I guess sudden change and um, what that's been like. Mm -hmm. And in thinking about the title of Fuzzy Brain, where were you, like, where did you get that from? And do you feel like the title matches that theme slash does it connect with the rest of your work? Yeah, I mean, I I definitely think so. It it matches the album. Um, I don't remember where I got it from. I remember just like, I don't know if I had it before I made the voice memo or not, but I had Fuzzy Brain, which was like the guitar progression um, of like the song Fuzzy Brain. And then I titled that voice memo Fuzzy Brain. I didn't have the lyrics or anything yet. So I guess I just knew I would write a song called Fuzzy Brain. Then I ended up making the album called Fuzzy Brain. Um, But I don't know. I didn't think about it too much. (laughs) And uh, you mentioned that it got a lot of traction, like even at, like at a young age, you got a lot of traction with a fuzzy brain. And um, did that album gaining so much attention really kind of inspire you to keep going in that, you know, the music you were making was uh, reaching people? Good question. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it changed a lot. Like, you hear about like sophomore album slumps and stuff. And I was just like, I'm not going to let that happen. (laughs) And so I, um, I don't know. I think the way that it's set up for me is really exciting because I really truly do just make my own music. And that kind of allows more space for, I think fans and listeners to like have change happen. If that makes sense. Like I feel like people are more susceptible to change if they know like it's solely a personal thing. And they see it's like, you know, change over time. If, if I was like 
you know, a group working with producers, people might want like kind of the same album to happen. Mm -hmm. But I think people are more open to a change. I mean, and I'm also saying this, like, I don't know, you know, let's hope, let's hope uh, people like the new album. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I think change is good. And um, I've, I've grown up and I'm really happy with where I am. Um, but yeah. In, and, you know, in working in all of these projects and obviously it's, coming from your mind what's it like for you working solo like working by yourself and are you ever looking to collaborate because I know you said um, someone else had mastered the project but what do you mm. like about working by yourself and what do you not like versus collaborating with other people that's a great question like I, I would love to collaborate in the future like I love like my favorite thing is producing and writing music um, I don't know what it would look like like if I were to work with someone else um, like I don't see myself as like a singer or something. It's more of like a producer role. Um, and it's like a whole thing. Like Dayglo is like all of the aspects since I did it, it kind of makes it the special personal thing. Um, so there's, there's a lot of layers. I think why I like working alone, mostly because it's just personal and it allows the listener to know like, um, like this is fully and totally made directly by someone like no facade in between or like gateways it had to go through. Um, it's just like an album I made and I share it. And I think that's really special because um, I think people look for that to have like this authentic connection um, with art. And I don't want to like, make it seem authentic. Like I just want to do it. Like I want to really actually make the whole album myself and then share it. Um, so I, I try to do that, but maybe someday I'd, I'll be working with other people. Who knows? Yeah. Cool. And you talked about, um, you know, producing as well. How do you feel like you've kind of grown as a producer and what's your approach to producing on songs? Well, well first I feel like I've just learned what things do like with fuzzy brain like i was watching i mean if you if you people there if there's any producers watching this youtube tutorials are terrible like they, <laughs> they always pick like the worst songs to mix and it's so like grueling to just like sit through but i mean not everyone is bad you know that i've seen but i just would kind of avoid youtube tutorials and just like learn by ear like how to mix and so at first I didn't know really what I was doing and I didn't have any budget or gear or anything. I just used like the free plugins that were on logic. Um, and yeah, I mean like, I, I, I don't know, like I was just doing what I thought would work. And then with harmony house, I had a little bit more logistical idea of like what mixing means and like what frequencies did what and how a compressor works and things like that. Um, and I have a little bit more, hardware uh outboard stuff for that um and i recorded real synthesizers um for the most part um so everything's more like live and um i guess lively yeah just like more real stuff um but yeah i don't know i i, I never want to do anything completely classically like i can't read music or um, I don't know how to do a lot of stuff the right way because I don't really think in music like there is a total like right way to do it. So I just want to really find my sound, find what is fun to do and do that. And so I think with Harmony House, I felt really comfortable with where I was and I feel like it just generally sounded better. But um you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of figuring all that out as a producer too, between the two albums, it sounds like you really picked up a lot, learned a lot. Was that all just from mostly trial and error plus YouTube? Or was that, uh, did you have somebody that was like really helping you out or somebody that collaborated with you? Yeah. I mean, honestly, like mostly trial and error. Like I have a couple like musical friends now. Like I have a friend named Nori who plays in my band. He plays keys oh, cool. um, on my band. He has a, he has a band called baby. Um, it will be impossible to find uh, cause he has, <laughs> he has a song called relax, um, which is great, but the song is baby relax. 
<laughs> so when you look that up, like it's just like relaxing baby music. Yeah. So it's so deep. I in imagine the, internet. the playlist that you'll get on Spotify. Right? From certain- <laughs> I know. So, um, anyways, that's my little shout out for Nori. Um, but yeah, we we kind of nerd out on gear and stuff, and you know, I've got a couple like internet friends, I guess that. Um, you know, our artists that I look up to and we'll chat a little bit here and there about gear and stuff, but mostly it's just trial and error and making music every day and just like working on it. Yeah. Cool. And I mean, speaking of YouTube, I know during quarantine you were doing like the How I Made series on YouTube of of those videos of like breaking down different songs that you worked on. Can you talk about that for a little bit? Because I thought that was really cool. I like watching all those like producers break down how they do whatever, whatever song. And I thought that was a really cool kind of engaging thing for you to do with fans. Sure. Yeah. I, I think the general idea of it was I wish the artists that I love would do that. So I was like, well, there has to be at least a couple people out there that would really hope that I can, you know, share all my secrets. And like I was saying earlier, like I just assumed like every lead singer was involved with like mixing the bass and like other bands or (laughs) stuff. Like I just thought music was so like, different than it is in the way that most people make music. And so I realized like I had this opportunity because I can seriously talk about every part of every single thing about my music and say why I did it, what it was. And that's really cool because, you know, a lot of artists don't have that opportunity. And so um, I thought I might as well just share um, because the album's made, you know, there's no reason to keep the secret or something. So (laughs) And we talked about a lot about you in the studio and you producing, but uh, I want to ask you a quick thing about your live shows too, because I know right after you released Fuzzy Brain, you got to play ACL down in Austin. And, uh, what, what was it like starting to play like, I don't know, big events like that in your hometown and around the U.S.? Super cool. Um, I cannot wait to play shows again. That is going to be so fun. Um, it's been just like weird that like the, the day like, COVID became like a word that like everybody knew it was the first day of my scheduled tour. Oh, um, and we drove from uh, Austin to Chicago and we left Austin like in the van, like we're going to be gone for months, wow. you know, like completely optimistic. And by the time we got to Chicago, everything was like shut down and we were like, what just happened? <laughs> um, so it was oh, crazy. Like um, so I'm really excited for shows to happen again. It's really weird that like I've had so much growth this year um, because I haven't had the baby steps you know like I'm playing ACL this year um, and you know the last time I played it it was just like you know I wasn't even on the poster like I was added on on their social media one weekend only um, like very small on this little thing at like I think we played at like 2 p.m. or something, you know, and now it's just like a much bigger deal the next time. So um, I didn't really get to have baby steps in shows, uh, which is a weird thing to complain about. But it's going to be strange. Like the door just opens and it's like, oh, here we go. You know, <laughs> a lot bigger than I realized because it's hard to translate like um, like playing music and like seeing like my Instagram followers grow. It just looks like a number. It's just different when you're in a group of people. Um, so I'm really excited for that and to meet fans and um, get to play live music. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I can imagine. And I'm excited yeah. for you to get back out there and play live music. But until then, we're going to let you go ahead and play some live music for us on the stream. Yes. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, <laughs> we're, we're getting digital. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's it's what we've got. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm, thank you I'm glad again. to be here. Thanks so much again for joining us. And so you can go ahead and play a few songs and we'll be back to chat a little bit later. Cool. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay. okay, everyone. Um... So I, I mentioned my bandmate earlier. As you can tell, they're not here. Um, so I'm going to be playing the music. Oh, I can't. Okay. Um, I'm going to be playing the tracks with my foot. It's kind of like me playing the music with my past self, if that makes any sense. But anyways, this one's called Something... Taking me down 
Where's the place? Calling the cab, showing up late. Now that it's all already wait, who will you be? You coffee to go, it's harder than Hades. Some people line up to see a Mercedes. They'll call it a car, they call it a lady, but what'll it be? Time won't take nothing, believe me, it's you that takes the time. Tell me if what makes you someone is something, then why can't I have mine? I've waited so long. your face, love what you see, then copy and paste, what well, is in the magic, don't you want to have it, and say it's all mine, compile the content, you film in the mosh pit, you ship it and box it, right up to your doorstep, man, ain't it a wonder, that we're going under, but everyone's high. Time won't take nothing, believe me, it's you that takes the time Tell me if what makes you someone or something, then why can't I have mine? I've waited so long, take your time, it's taking time, taking my time to take your time, to take your time, it's taking my time, to take your time, to take your time, take your time, taking my time, to take your time, I'm ready to take your time, it's taking time. I love the applause. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Okay. Uh, let's make sure. All right. This one is called, Can I Call You Tonight?
go easy. Don't go, don't go so easy. Don't go, don't go easy. Don't go, don't go so easy. Don't go, don't so can't call you tonight. I'm trying to make a memory. Just how I feel. Can you tell me what's real? I hear your voice in the phone Now I'm no longer here Just how I feel Could you tell me what's real Anymore Cause I remember This one's called Hot Rod. Boom! So let's sing a song. What can we sing? The fans are going wild. I know here. they're loving it. <laughs> well, everyone, in, everyone in the chat was having a really, really good time. And we also were really, really enjoying your music. So again, thank you so, so much for joining us on stream. Yeah. Glad to be here. 
Yeah. And we're looking forward to chatting with you a little bit more, too. I wanted to ask, um, you know, a little bit more about Harmony House, because you talked so much about being at different points in your life for each of these projects. I wanted to hear what point were you at in your life when you were approaching, when you first were starting working on Harmony House? And what was your approach to the project just in general? Hmm. Um, I started Harmony House... Like I was saying, I, I view albums like a timepiece of who I am, and I'm I'm a very sentimental person, um, and so I think I do that locationally as well. So Fuzzy Brain I made in my bedroom at home in Alito, like in my parents' house, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then Harmony House I started when I was in Austin, um, and it was recorded kind of in like two different places. Majority of it was actually recorded. Um, my f- friend who used to play guitar in my band. Um, he had this shed like on a ranch outside of Austin, um, just like a shed, like holding like shovels and stuff. Um, and I didn't have any place to put my gear cause I was still living, even though I dropped out of college and I was still like touring and stuff. I was living with nine other college students. Oh wow. Um, and like this, like pretty gross dorm. <laughs> um, and I was just like, just like one disconnected from like the college thing, not like like I hated it, but I just, I didn't go to college. Like we didn't have much to relate about. So I was like living there and I didn't have any place to put my gear. So anyways, uh, we like did the whole thing, like all the way Chip and Joanna style. Like we, uh, renovated it and, um, added the insulation and everything ourselves. Um, and then I put all my gear in there for a little bit and, um, I made most of Harmony House there. Um, at least like wrote most of it. And then I moved to another house in Austin for a little bit at the start of quarantine. Um, that was like near downtown ish. Um, and then mixed it all there pretty much. Um, yeah. And, uh, talking about the production of the album too, was, was there anything sonically that you really wanted to experiment with on this album? And if so, did you really just get to do it? Yeah. So, Oh, and and what I was going to say about the album, um, Mm -hmm. the initial idea of Harmony House was I wanted to write the soundtrack of a sitcom that doesn't exist um, (laughs) because I wanted it to be like really nostalgic. And um, I was listening to a lot of like sitcom ish music, you know, like Christopher Cross type stuff um, and like Paul Simon. And I don't know. I just loved like the idea of that. And that really inspired me and fueled the idea of Harmony House. Um, which has been really encouraging because a lot of the people are like, this sounds like, you know, it could go in a sitcom. Um, so if any uh, sitcom director is on some major TV show <laughs> exactly. or looking or on this stream by any chance and uh, yeah, have like a multi-million dollar contract they could hand me, let's go. Um, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, but just kind of start off like a sitcom idea. Yeah, Harmony House nice. is a great name for a sitcom, I feel like yeah. anyway. So. Thank you. Well, my, I was very ambitious at the start, um, and I wanted to film like a pilot episode um, and like have musical motifs of the entire album throughout Ooh. the episode, and just have like me all, all my friends and just as this like you know dumb thing. But then I realized that would be very expensive. So um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just an imaginary sitcom. I love that idea though. I like that idea a lot. Um, So in looking back at the album, what song were you most proud of and which one did you enjoy making the most? Um, Yeah, it's hard to say, like, my favorite. Um, I mean, I'm sure people say that often, but uh, I don't know. Like, it's going to take some time, I think, to see how people react um, to the album. Like, there's definitely the ones that I made the singles, you know, and... um, but there's no songs in the album that aren't like a very sentimental song to me. Um, the one that was really fun to make is called Crying on the Dance Floor. Um, and that song I was listening to a lot of like Bruce Hornsby and um, Don Henley and just that like like sunglasses, like 80s power music. Yeah. And nice. I, I just like, I didn't, th- it felt like a challenge to make that music and it was really fun. I was listening to a lot of it. Um, and yeah, just like crying out of the dance floor channels that a lot. So that was really fun to do. And I made it like as truly authentic as possible. Like I did tons of 
piano takes, making sure it was right and like just recorded it real time, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Are, are there any, when you think about, you know, all that, because you've mentioned so many different artists and genres that you listen to over the course of working on all these different projects, are there any specific sounds or genres that you're interested in now that you feel like you'd want to dive into for in the future when you're thinking of making music? Like current artists? Yeah, either current or just whatever you're listening to now, but are there any sounds that you've just been attracted to that you'd want to put on new projects or new songs in the future? Yeah, I mean, I love the 80s specifically because it was a very, like, explorative time. Like, synthesizers were being built, and they are just, like, these computers and studios, and people are like, what do we do with this? And... MTV was happening. So like bands were getting visual and it was this time where people were just like immediately really creative. It hadn't been diluted at all. It was just like music. And nowadays the most provocative thing will like grab our attention for two seconds. And we're like, okay, what's next? And so, um, I think it was really a cool time. The eighties just like explored, exploring sounds and I don't know. So a lot of eighties music, like the new wave, um, is kind of like the corner um, that I'm in right now with like Duran Duran or Devo, Talking Heads. I love David Byrne. And, um, there's a little bit of that on, um, Harmony House, a little bit of David Byrne inspired stuff. Um, but yeah, just kind of diving deeper into like eighties artists that like, well, all the ones I just listed were huge bands, but like, I'm interested in discovering bands that like didn't make it in the eighties. Mm -hmm. It's like really fun finding this artist. It's like this is incredible music. It like never was discovered and it's too late. I think that's just really fun to like find that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, or or bands that kind of had maybe like a one hit wonder but have like other really good deep cuts yes. that you can actually get into. Like Christopher Cross. Yes, it exactly like Christopher awesome. Cross. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love Christopher Cross. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, you mentioned a lot of eighties music inspiration and making this new album. Um, I'm curious to know, what did you really start listening to when you got to start making your own music? Ooh, when I started making music, I was into like, like just EDM stuff, like wow. love and Skrillex and like hardcore EDM stuff. Like there is a band, what's their name? Uh, I guess not a band. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I mean, just like, like Skrillet, like, is it like the, Flume, Odessa. Oh yeah. All those <laughs> bands are awesome. Also those, um, yeah, but Zed. just like EDM type stuff. Um, and that initially fueled my love for synths and production. And that, I mean, all EDM, like it's crazy. The amount of work and production is put into that stuff. So I've, you know, I'm not the type of person that's like it, nobody, you know, anybody can make dubstep or something, which, I mean, there's some songs that are bad, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's incredible. The amount of work that like Skrillex puts into music and stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, and then freshman year of high school, I kind of took a hard right and started listening to like bright eyes and Connor Oberst and like all this full on folk stuff. Um, and then, you know, I found alternative music and Tame Impala and, um, you know, like I was saying, Passion Pit, MGMT, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And cool. I guess started listening to like 80s music and, you know, end of high school. Nice, nice. I like how, because I was going to ask when you were um, talking about EDM, how you feel like diving into that genre affected the way you approach making music now, but you talked about you feel like that's where you got your love of synths, but is there anything else you feel like you took from that time or from all of those genres that you still go back to and pull from now? Yeah. Well, one of my first artists that I loved was Owl City. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Like, I love, <laughs> oh my and gosh. I still do um, because oh, it's Owl catchy. City is one person. It's Adam Young and he, he just is so smart and like fireflies is, you know, it's kind of like a meme and his music is, it's pretty funny. Like it's very like it's thing. Um, but I was so like fascinated by, um, how intricate and catchy all his music was. It's, it's all like just small little phrases that will like stay like, he's like yeah. the king of hooks. Yeah. And, um, I just, that was my initial like first artist that I loved. And I think of music you know, very melodically. And so I think there's probably 
a lot of Owl City throughout my music still, um, you know, which is awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. And, that. um, you know, we're, we're going to let you get back into your performance now, but uh, we wanted to tell the chat real quick. If you have any questions, um, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll overlook them and then we'll ask them right after these two songs. Yeah. So whenever you're ready. <laughs> All right, let's rock. Um, okay, where did I put my pick? I've been fidgeting with it. Uh, uh, but how did I lose my pick? Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> okay. This is a new song off my new album. It's called Medicine. This is my first time to play it um, without my band, so... Um, let's rock and roll. makes me laugh um can't get used to that it's awesome yeah okay well this is my last song 
Um, this is another one off my new album called Close to You. It's a dance song. So wherever you are, if you want to dance with me, you're welcome to. If not, uh, let's get digital. Yo, yo. For the rest of the night I guess that's alright They all left when you walked home And it makes sense that they all know It was only for you If only you knew What good is love Without any strength did above stuck in between tell me for once what that even means I wanna know you I can't make you right there's something on my mind there's something that From a distance So close but I missed it Now you're walking away When I wish you would stay I get stuck in a conversation For it night, same situation I beat myself up For not speaking up Every night I can't make you right Great. That was great. <laughs> I was grooving during the last yeah, one. We were along over here. Don was making me laugh and dancing. That was Thank great. You. Oh my goodness. It's been so great having you on stream. And before we let you go, yeah. um, we would just love to know what's coming up next for you in terms of touring, new music releasing. I know you just had the album released too, but what can what else can fans expect from you in the coming months and weeks in the year? Sure. Um, yeah, this has been really fun. Thanks for having me. Um <laughs> I yeah, so I just released an album. It's called Harmony House. Um, it is on all corners of the internet. So however you want to find it, it's probably there. Um, but yeah, touring. I'll be touring. It's looking like this fall, um, which is going to be awesome. Like a whole U.S. tour um, coming pretty much everywhere I can. And um, yeah, two shows in Canada. I don't know if anybody is in Canada <laughs> watching this, but um, yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, so I'm just excited. It's all really good stuff. And, um, I'm, you know, mind blown that I'm even doing something like this. So it's cool. Yeah. Awesome. That's wow. So well, exciting. um, we just want to thank you so much for, you know, bringing the jams to the stream and the, the whole chat is, uh, has been firing off this whole time. Yeah. Everybody's so happy to see you. So, um, <laughs> it's been really great having you on stream. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I wish I could see everyone on the chat. <laughs> um, but thanks everyone for being here. Um, I appreciate it. It's really fun. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Have a great rest of your day.